So we were in class today just talking about how to solve a quadratic using square roots. And what we want to get into is uh, looking at how to simplify square roots. So when I look at square roots, and there are there is a property called the product property, uh, which talks about this idea that if I have two things that are being multiplied together, like the square root of a times b, I can split it up and say it's the square root of a times the square root of b. Or the converse is true. Like if I have two quantities, square root of a uh, times the square root of a times the square root of b, I can get this to be the square root of a times b. So what I want to do is I want to apply this in this situation. So I want to simplify square root of 50. I want to find out what times what gets me the square root of 50. And I'm going to look at this two different ways. Okay, um, I know that the square root of 50 is the same thing as taking the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. Okay. The reason why I choose 25 is because I know 25 is a perfect square and it goes into 50. So based off the product property, what I can say is that the square root of 25 times the square root of 2 is the same thing as the square root of 50. And what do I know about the square root of 25? Well, I know that is 5. So I can say that's the same thing, or it's equivalent to 5 square root of 2. But what I want to think about is I want to think about this in another way. So what I can do is break down 50. What times what gets me 50? Well, I know that 25 times 2 gets me 50. And I also know that 5 times 5 times 2 gets me 50. OK? In order to simplify this, because I'm taking the square root of something, or because the square root of 25 is 5, that means that there were two 5's underneath that square root sign, which made it 1 5. So because there are two 5's underneath this radical sign, I can take one out and say that this is 5 square root of 2. So let's try to apply it in this situation here. Square root of 98. Well, let's try to break it down all the way down to prime factors. What times what gets me 98? 49 times 2 gets me 98. And 7 times 7 times 2 gets me 98 too. Well, I know square root of 49 is a perfect square, so that means I have two 7s underneath my radical sign, which means that square root of 98, for every pair, I take one out and put it in front of the radical sign, is the same thing as saying 7 square root of 2. So let's look at this example right here of 288. Well, what gets me 288? Well, I could start off easy and say it's 2 times 144. OK? And 144 breaks down to be 72 times 2, uh, which breaks down to be 9 times 8. OK? 9 breaks down to be 3, so I got 2 times 3 times 3. 8 breaks down to be 4 times 2 times 2. So I got 2 times 3 times 3. 4 breaks down to be 2 times 2. And then I got these two 2's two left over. So I'm looking for two of the same object. So in this case, I have a pair of twos, which means I can take one out and put it in front of the radical sign. I got another pair of twos, which means I can take another one out. And then I have two threes. OK? So what happens is I know that 2 times 2 times 3 is 12, which makes this the same thing as 12 square root of 2. The other way I can look at it is what is the largest perfect square that goes into 288? 144. So I could say it's the same thing as saying square root of 144 times the square root of 2. 
What is the square root of 144? It's 12 square root of 2. So let's look at 450. Well, 450 is the same thing as 45 times 10. And I have 9 times 5 times 5 times 2. Well, four, 9 breaks down to be 3 times 3 times 5 times 5 times 2. So I have a pair of 3's, which means I can take one out. A pair of 5's, which means I can take one out. And I have a square root of 2 left over. So I have 15 square root of 2. If you have any questions, I encourage you guys to watch this video again. We'll try to do some examples of these tomorrow in class.